Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is CCB Fozzie. I'm CCB Rise. And this is the uh, Ships and uh, Modules Balance presentation here at eVegas. So this is the last presentation of the day. Got the party tonight. You guys looking forward to the party? <laughs> awesome. So am I. It's going to be good. All right. So let's dive into the presentation. So this is going to cover, as you would expect, Ship and Module Balance in eVe. Uh, we're going to do a bit of a look back on the last year, uh, talk a little bit about the balance team that uh, CCB Seagull has uh, brought forward to you guys and the way it's focused, uh, look at the lifeblood expansion ship and module features, uh, a little peek at what's coming in the future, and uh, some stats and metrics, and then a special community participation feature that I think uh, I'm really excited about and I hope some of you guys are going to be excited about as well. And then we're going to do some questions if we have time at the end, so we'll see uh, how long this ends up taking. So looking back over the last year, um, I'm going to uh, go through some of what's been, what happened since last year. We uh, released Ascension, which included Command Burst. This is one of the things that I've been incredibly happy we were able to actually release because the removal of off-grid links had been one of the things that we had spent like five years saying, yeah, we'd like to do that. It's really important. We really want to do it. We really want to do it. And then we eventually did it, which always feels really good. So just think about all the things that are going to feel really fun that we're saying we want to do that will get done in five years from now and how good that's going to feel. <laughs> Speaking of uh, stuff that uh, we promised for a long time and eventually committed and actually finished up, Rorquals. So mining command ships, uh, this is a big part of the Ascension uh, balance expansion. Uh, we created the new Porpoise ship, we buffed the Orca a ton, we buffed the Rorqual a ton, we buffed the Rorqual a ton, we buffed the Rorqual a ton, <laughs> which then meant that we spent a lot of the rest of the year nerfing mining foreman ships. <laughs> Obviously, uh, it's always a challenge to judge exactly what the appropriate power level for a ship is. Uh, it's one of those things that's like driving, you kind of just adjust the wheel and uh, try to stay on the road bit by bit. Uh, and uh, this is something that we may still need to make more adjustments in the future, but at least we're getting into a pretty decent place, I think. We also, with Ascension, released Fitting Simulation. What do you guys think of Fitting Simulation? <laughs> Another one of those things we've really wanted to do for a long time, and it felt amazing to get it into the game. Uh, it's been really great to see you guys taking advantage of it. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, quality of life features for EVE. Uh, I was just going to put in a small shout out there to Karker, who put in a lot of like home hours to make that feature happen. And she's yeah. on the stream and doing a lot of support for the stream. So, yeah. Let's give her a hand. Then after Ascension, we had the Balance Pass complete rework of Defender Missiles. Uh, that we, had to, we changed the acronym because it would have been a bit confusing, but uh, there's, still, there's still a really exciting anti-bomber option now that you have. We also released a couple of Concord ships that we released a lot of. Um, <laughs> we're, we're releasing another one uh, later this year, but uh, it's going to come out in smaller numbers. Uh, and it's been really cool seeing you guys playing with these things. Uh, they're really exciting ships. I really love being able to introduce ships that aren't all that powerful on a really like direct power level, but still feel really cool. They are different and have a creative set of bonuses uh, and look cool. The kind of thing that people can prize even though it's not going to be so powerful that it feels oppressive to fight against. Uh, and these, I think, did a really great job with that. And hopefully the battleship will as well. Uh, we also introduced a bunch of new uh, pirate faction capitals. This is the Dagon. We've been seeing some people taking some good use of these guys. The Chemosh, and then, of course, the, the best of them all, the Moloch. Uh, it's been really great seeing people getting, like, uh, multiple faction titans into the same fleets together and making screenshots of them. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really fun to watch this, the, the really high-end, expensive bling get shown off and used as bait sometimes. Another really gigantic balance change that we got in last year was strategic cruisers. Uh, this is something that we've been wanting to do for a very long time, to simplify these guys, to streamline them, uh, to do a big balance pass on them. And uh, it felt really good to be able to get that out. Uh, this it was a gigantic task because it's essentially balancing and creating 256 ships. 
Um, all the combinations have to be balanced with each other. And there's no way we were able to be, going to be able to do that on our own, which is why we asked your guys' help ask the community to help give us uh, more feedback and more help with it. And that's where the strategic, Cooper, the strategic Cruiser Focus Group came in. Uh, these guys were all incredibly helpful. I want to give them a huge shout out. Can you guys give them a hand? A bunch of players that joined, plus members of CSMs 11 and 12. And they were all incredibly helpful, and we never would have been able to do this without them. We're going to have some stats to show off some of the effects of uh, how you guys have been using the uh, strategic cruisers uh, a little bit later in the presentation. Unsurprisingly, you're going to see some Lokis. <laughs> all right, so um, next up, I want to talk a bit about this balance team announcement, which CCP Siegel made a bit back. And I'm actually still not great at talking or about or describing this, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, Basically, what we have is added bandwidth for an existing team to do a lot more ship and module work and do it with a little bit of a different approach than we used to. And that's really exciting for us. Um, this is coming as a shift from a kind of long chain of different approach to balance when, when around the time Fozzie and I joined the team was around when ship tier side was happening. And following ship tier side, there was actually quite a bit of feedback in the community and a lot of feedback internally that Everyone was feeling a lot of fatigue around change. There was just kind of too much going on, and we needed to slow down and take it easy so that people had the time to like get used to any strategies or make investments in things before they were kind of upended. And so we really slowed down pace a lot. And um, that, you know, because of uh, feedback, um, both from those sources, again, a lot of feedback from the CSM. The last uh, couple CSM summits have been dominated by this topic. Um, we see it in the community, and a lot of a lot of us internally as well have been pushing for a little more um, move back towards focus on ship and module balance, so that we can just introduce more change. We've been a little low on change since then. Um, so, due to all that feedback from all those reasons, um, we're just looking at trying to create space within the dev team where we can be sure that we have regular, fast-paced tweaks to make sure that the kind of combat landscape is interesting and uh, that the meta keeps moving. And um, so that's sort of one of the huge pillars of what we're trying to do. Um, yeah, iterate, iterate quickly, um, do interesting things at a fast pace. Um, the other big part of this is to focus away from um, reactionary balance changes, which is during the slower pace time, a lot of our focus has been on identifying problems, trying to fill gaps, like fix things, basically. And rather than that, uh, the, the sort of mission that's been given to our team, um, this particular, you know, my, my, my team, talking about team landscape is really confusing with balance. But basically, we want to focus on new. So we want to look at doing things more like command destroyers, more like um, the new command bursts, where it's, it's an actual completely new behavior rather than something that's a reaction or a, um, you know, uh, a fix for something that's already there. And the good thing, uh, the exciting thing to me, and I think what we're trying to, what Siegel is trying to convey in the video that we hope would excite you, is that by putting it onto a gameplay team on Team Size Matters, we have a lot more engineering support, which gives us a lot more room for prototyping and experimenting and risk taking, which um, are hard to do from a more design centric balance work focus like we have for um, sort of the more regular balance stuff you're used to. So that's sort of where we're at. Um, you guys are going to see the results of that kind of over the next few months and you know, into the next year. I was really hoping to have an example of the newness that we're working on for you guys today, but it's a little too far out, so you're gonna have to wait a little longer. Um, but we can talk about pace and about what we're expecting to do with that. So um, the lifeblood balance pass, which is hitting a lot of the alpha ships, is the first example of that that you're seeing. And with this, by the way, I'm actually, if I can survey, can you guys in here raise your hand if you know about this pass, like if you've read details, dev blog or whatever. I'm just curious like how many people at these events are actually up to date on, so like half of you or something like that. So we're doing a pass in lifeblood where we're gonna hit most of the ships that alphas, um, you know, before the changes we announced yesterday <laughs> would use. Uh, Tech one frigates, uh, cruisers and destroyers. Our hope here is to just address some of the big issues that stood out in those classes and also um, start working on process for this more fast-paced uh, routine that we hope to establish within the team. And um, we also want to work towards seeing how we can do it, driving excitement within the community um, and within the combat meta without tons of big changes, just with small tweaks. 
I do want to give a shout out here to the CSM. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about Suetonia, but he's one of the nerdiest nerds ever, and it's like, I, I'm so appreciative of the work that him and the rest of the other CSM did uh, in making suggestions and helping us refine ideas for this past and stuff coming soon. So as for the past itself, uh, I'll just run through it a little bit quickly, but we're uh, going to move a high slot on the rifter from uh, the high to the low, hoping this gives it uh, better chances to brawl and artillery kite. Um, just some, some um, more focus for it so it's not kind of waffling around being awkward and not knowing how to use that high slot. Um, we're giving a little nerf to the Tristan, a little more mass. Um, even though the ship's extremely popular, um, we definitely think that's more due to its kind of diversity of application rather than being super OP, so we don't want to hit it too hard, but a little tweak there. Then we have destroyers. Um, Dragoons getting an extra mid, a little extra fitting room. Um, we're hoping this lets it do a better job kind of controlling um, space so it can use its cap warfare. Also, um, um, give it a little more cap stability so it has room to run those newts if it wants to. Um, big mass buff for the Corax to speed it up a bit, some extra HP, uh, so that this thing can move around a little bit better and won't be so awkward. It may need more buffs afterwards, but we're going to start with this and see how it goes. Next, my favorite stuff, the cruisers. Um, so with the Arbitrator, um, which is also true for the Bellicose, um, like we talked about in the blog, it's sort of in this weird position of being um, the only representative for secondary weapon systems, so missiles in both cases, basically. Um, uh, well, drones for Amar and missiles for Mimitar, and, um, but also being the disruption cruiser. So it, it was sort of set up like a disruption cruiser where it should be focused on E-War, but we also want it to fill uh, the combat role with the secondary system as well. So we're basically just giving them a strong fitting buff so that there's plenty of room um, for both of them to compete better as generalists, where they're just solid combat ships as well as being a disruption option. Um, in the case of the Arbitrator, you can see a fitting room, an extra launcher slot, and um, lock range on both as well so that they can use the painters and uh, weapon disruptors more easily. The Omen, also getting some more fitting room, so you're not quite as constrained on tank. Um, um, when you're also trying to get damage and cap stability. Pretty simple there. Hopefully that shines a little bit more now. It's kind of Omen Navy issue light. Uh, we'll see. Stabber getting a whole bunch more damage. Um, Stabber's everyone's sh favorite ship to hate, but uh, <laughs> I love it, and I think it'll probably be pretty nasty as a little anti-support ship with this buff. We'll see, though. Uh, again, um, some of the reaction you know, was mixed. Some people thought this is plenty, some not, so we'll see. Um, there's the fitting changes for the Bellicose, and Last but not least, the Vexor, which is getting a pretty hefty power grid nerf so that it's a little more constrained when trying to figure out how to fit it. Come on, it's the most OP ship. So. <laughs> anyway, that's the Lifeblood pass. That stuff's coming out um, with Lifeblood and hopefully is a really fun mix-up for um, you know, people flying these ships, which tons of people do. So we're pumped about that. <clears throat> okay, so the number one response when we posted this stuff was, yeah, yeah, cool that there's a balance pass, but the question is how long until the next one? Like, if, if the pace is actually going to pick up, they got to prove it soon. So I'm going to tell you now that coming in either December or January, we're hoping December, but we'll see how it goes, we're going to hit these guys next. Um, <laughs> I mean, love the excitement. I hope we don't screw it up. We're going <laughs> to... But yeah, we're, we're pumped to you. Uh, I don't have all the details for you right now, but let me talk about what we're going to try and accomplish. So for uh, hacks and assault frigates, we really want to uh, reinforce the themes they have. So we want the, you know, the resilient, tough, often fleet-oriented ships. We want that to stay the same. We want to find a way to make them distinct. One of the you know, toughest problems with these classes is that it just there's so much overlap when you get Tech 3 destroyers, um, other Tech 2 frigates, and then Tech 3 cruisers and battle cruisers at the cruiser level. There's just a ton of overlap for both these classes, so we're looking for a way to make them a bit more distinct um, rather than try to you know, balance them within that huge pile of ships that does sort of the same stuff. And um, just like with the pass we just did on the Alpha ships, we want to run through and give individual tweaks. Uh, oh, sorry, and yeah, address major weaknesses. Um, we talked about a lot so far with CSM, the assault frigate speed, mass looking at you know, speeding them up a bit, and we'll look for other opportunities like that. <clears throat> the last thing, just going through and giving individual tweaks here and there to try and bring the whole class to more overall balance. What I can tell you specifically is that this is 
our uh, current work in progress um, kind of mock up for what we're going to do to try and make these classes stand out. The assault damage control. This is going to be a low slot module. It's going to give you damage control passive resistances, or roughly, it might be a little less than a damage control too. And then you're going to activate it for extremely high resistance bonuses for a short duration. It's going to be um, on cooldown for a significant amount of time after the duration. And this is a spreadsheet with rough stats for what we're looking at. Oh, like, one yeah. more slide. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> so you guys can go and analyze this later. But what you're looking at is basically a damage control that can go active for 20 seconds to give you 80% resistance across the board. <clears throat> and then go and cool down for around two minutes. We're still tuning this. But what we're hoping is that this means that you now have a really interesting uh, option against really heavy damage that's coming in for a short time. You can use that to wrap up, catch reps, get out of fights, reposition, whatever. And we think at both the Salt Frigate level and at Hack level, it's going to have a space and, and provide some pretty cool gameplay. We're really interested to hear what you guys think about that, but that's the plan for now. Um, after Hacks and AFs, we have a lot of options. I'm not sure what they'll be yet. or I'm, I'm not going to commit to anything yet, but here's some things that are on the table. Um, a pass on quality of life for battleships is very likely, especially with the alpha changes. <clears throat> I mean, you know, requests for cargo space, lock range, things like that are super common. I think doing a pass like that makes tons of sense. And at the same time, go through and just make individual tweaks to try and make, um, you know, balance better across all of them. So that's definitely on the table. Um, I miss the Talos personally, so it's possible we'll take a look at attack PCs again. Um, <laughs> And definitely pirate factions uh, need some uh, tuning here and there. So th <laughs> those things are all on the table for the sort of sh you know, midterm, uh, and we'll see where we end up. Now, uh, I do want to mention one other feature. This is only uh, maybe peripherally related to ship and module balance, but you guys may have noticed in the trailer that there was a slide for wagers on duels. <clears throat> this feature has kind of a, a funny backstory, which I'm, I can talk to you about in the bar, but we are going to be introducing with Lifeblood uh, the option to just add a bet amount to any duel you make. Um, if the person agrees to it, we take the ISK from both of you and give it to the winner when someone dies. Um, this feature is, is largely meant to open up discussion in a way. We, we don't expect that like suddenly the game is going to be full of betting on dueling all over the place or something like that. But we do um, talk a lot about what kind of features people would be interested in when it comes to um, both structured PvP, you know, all the old arena discussions and everything that goes with that, as well as uh, a lot of interesting things around gambling on PvP, you know, betting on other players, betting on your own competitive. All, all this stuff is super fascinating. It feels like it fits Eve. And this is kind of our just barely putting our toe in the pool and starting to talk to you guys and see what it would take for you to really engage with a feature like this, whether or not that's something you want. And in the meantime, I expect there'll be some really funny stories, so that should be pretty solid. And I'll hand it back to uh, Fozzie. All right, so some of the other stuff that's coming balance-wise in uh, Lifeblood. This is something that uh, we talked a little bit about at the um, PVE presentation, the future PVE. Uh, it's, we're adding a new set of Garista's capitals, the rewards for the new Garista's shipyards that'll be appearing throughout the north. Uh, so this is the loggerhead to the Garista's uh, force auxiliary. Here's the bonuses they got right now. Uh, so the big notable thing here is this is a very powerful shield force auxiliary uh, at the faction level. At the moment, there's only an armor version of a uh, force auxiliary faction. Uh, and uh, this is going to provide, I think, some really cool options for those people that want to bling out a, uh, a triage drop. Uh, we've also got two new damage ships. So this is the Cayman, the Dreadnought. For both this one and the Titan, these are going to be the highest potential damage Dreadnought and Titans in the game um, because they combine uh, both missiles and fighters, uh, the very Garistas style, right? Like in the same way as Garistas uh, combine missiles and drones on their subcaps, these guys combine uh, missiles and fighters. So this is going to be a Dreadnought that also has a fighter bay and can launch light fighters. Uh, one launch tube, so it can only launch one, but it's a double strength fighter uh, in the same way as the other Grista ships. You have smaller numbers, but you can do great damage with them. So if you want to go all out and fit this thing up with both uh, BCUs and drone damage amps, you can do some pretty insane damage. And same with the Komodo. So this guy is the Garista's faction titan. 
Really, really fancy. And again, just like the um, Dreadnought, it combines a basically a super carrier and a Titan into one, uh, which is going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to be very interested to see what you guys do with these. Um, I also want to quickly go over some of stuff for the future, some of the things that we've discussed uh, in the past, but want to give you just basically a reminder of them. Uh, and continue to uh, solicit your feedback. We want to keep hearing what you guys think about these. These are a list of some of the things that are backlog items that we've discussed with the player base before. A lot of them originally came from you guys. They're suggestions from you that we really loved. And we'd like to do someday. We're investigating them, but we can't promise any dates yet. One of the big ones is converting Sancha shield modules, uh, give them a update to fit their new types of ships. New as in, like, whatever, seven years old or something like that. So new in Eve terms. Yeah. As well as new pirate implants. We showed this at FanFest. Uh, I just want to show it again. Uh, we still don't have a date to commit, but uh, I wanted to remind you that it is still something we're interested in doing because we still want to hear your feedback. Do, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? What would you like to see us change? Uh, we're definitely interested in hearing that at the bar. We also are still planning on more weapon tier aside, the, stu the stuff that we wanted to get in over the summer, but unfortunately a lot of the structure work especially uh, ended up taking precedence. Um, so we still want to do it in the future. Includes Tech 2M on faction weapons, meta module construction. We are interested in exploring, rebalancing, and stacking penalties for shield and cap regen, so buffing the modules, but then also giving them stacking uh, penalties. Something, again, we'd like to hear your feedback about. As well as the anti-headshotting FC ship. This is one of those ones that ends up being very controversial. We, uh, I think the majority of players that I talk to are positive about it, but the ones that are negative about it are really strongly negative about it. Um, and so I, I'd love to hear more of what you guys think. Uh, this is an ongoing discussion. It often comes up with the CSM as well. And now I think it's time to take a bit of a metrics break. We've got some stats that uh, CCP Larrikin has collected for us. Uh, he's back at home in Iceland, uh, unfortunately not able to make it to this Vegas, um, but he did put together some stat graphs for us, uh, so thanks to him. And uh, these are data from July to September, so like Q3. And uh, just a bit of the state of some of the um, modules and chips and a special look at Tech 3 uh, cruisers, uh, just to give you guys uh, some stats to dig through, because I know I love it and a lot of you love it as well. So this is uh, PvP damage by weapon group, um, with the very broad weapon groups, so like combat drones, hybrid weapons, missile launchers. You can see actually a pretty decent spread. This is including uh, ship structures, drones, and fighters, so attacking anything owned by another player. Um, smart bombs are really high, but a lot of that is because of smart bomb ratting, because uh, people have multiple ships beside each other that keep getting damaged. So smart bombs are artificially inflated by that on this. Uh, there's not that many people pipe bombing. <laughs> At least not yet. This is a breakdown of some of the uh, groups by size. So this is uh, small weapons, uh, light drones, obviously number one. Uh, then we got light missile launchers, Small blasters over there at the side, small autocannons. Uh, you can see quite a lot of diversity of damage here. And the medium size, on the medium size, uh, you guys won't be surprised to see that the long range weapons are generally doing better. So a lot of damage by medium artillery, a lot of damage by medium drones, of course, medium rail guns, rapid light missile launchers. Um, and then the, uh, the medium short range weapons are pretty similar. So you've got the, the pulses, the autocannons, and the blasters all within a roughly similar range there. This is the large weapon groups. Heavy drones, of course, really popular, partly because they're usable on a lot of different types of ships. Uh, but then, yeah, on, on the large size, then you start to see the short-range weapons take precedence, generally over the long range. So artillery and autocannons both do well, but blasters are well ahead of rails, pulses are well ahead of beams, uh, torpedoes are well ahead of rapid heavies and cruises uh, and sentry drones. And then uh, this is the XL version. And the XL, once again, uh, very focused on the um, uh, short range weapons. Uh, you can see over on the side there the boson super weapon, the highest, the most damage done by any of the super weapons. Well, actually, sorry, the, the direct damage one does even more. Uh, but the, on the other side, the Lance and the Reaper are a little bit lower. And this is some of the data around strategic cruisers. So you can see damage done by uh, strategic cruisers in PvP, <laughs> all four of them. The line here is when we did the strategic cruiser rebalance, and you could see how low the Loki was beforehand. <laughs> so it was, it was very, very low before, uh, and now it's doing pretty well. Um, 
there is definitely an element with a ship like this uh, where it is definitely the strongest right now, um, but we don't want to rush to nerf it because it, it kind of it deserves it after all this time. <laughs> and then here's the breakdown by security status as well. So in high sec, you can actually see the Proteus uh, is still number one uh, as it was before, although the others are a lot closer. In uh, low security space, uh, it's a much tighter range between them with some bursts. This is null sec, which is where the, you're seeing the really big takeoff of the Loki. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Loki fleets, both as hunter fleets uh, and as RD uh, fleets running around. A lot of heavy missile Lokis as well. Lokis have actually driven a lot of heavy missile usage. And uh, this is wormhole space, so big spike at the end. <laughs> So yeah, this, that spike right at the end, that's the, uh, the very end of September. Uh, you can see right at the end there. And this leads us into something that we've been thinking about doing that we really want to get your feedback on. Um, because we've been thinking about doing a monthly ship and module activity report. We've had really great success with the monthly economic report, um, which gives you information about all kinds of aspects of EVE's economy. We've seen players do their own analysis of it. We've seen players use it to give us better feedback. And just players enjoy looking through all that data. Uh, what do you think? Do you guys like the uh, monthly economic report? <laughs> And we're really interested in investigating doing something similar with ship and module activity. Uh, give players some new data to explore, uh, more opportunities for informed balance feedback. Uh, what do you guys think about that idea in general? So we're really interested in hearing more about this from you guys, what you'd like to see in it. Uh, it's still at a really early stage, so we can't promise any dates yet. Um, but we're potentially thinking about including stats on jumps, kills, deaths, undocks, warps by security band for all ships, potentially even by day, but then released at the end of the month so that you can't use it to see what happened yesterday. Release it like the first week of the month of, of everything that happened in the month before. Um, usage for modules, damage dealt by weapons. Um, we really want to hear from you. What do you think we should include in something like this? Um, and so come talk to us at the round table tomorrow. Come talk to us at the party uh, in the hallways. Uh, this is something that um, uh, all of us are really excited about, but especially CCP Larrikin's really excited about and has been kind of putting some early effort into it. And uh, I think it's going to be, uh, be really cool if we can get it out. And then another thing I'm really happy to be able to talk about uh, that I've, we've really wanted to do for a long time is something we introduced to you guys the concept of last year at Vegas because we wanted to hear what you thought. And that was community suggested fittings. Uh, this is something we first showed off last year at Vegas, just the idea of it because we wanted to know whether you thought it was a stupid idea, whether you thought it was a good idea, whether you thought it was something you would use. And we got really positive feedback from you guys. So we really, that really gave us a lot of incentive to keep working on the feature and it's been worked on in the background, this is another feature like the uh, fitting simulation that's been very heavily driven by CCP Karkor um, as a real passion project. And uh, what the idea of this feature is, is it's a collection of ship fittings created by you guys in the community. And they would introduce new players to ship fitting, to how to fit a ship, uh, show them the variety of options available for many ships. So what we're interested in having this actually show up in the client, so we've got the fitting simulation window right here at the... Uh, Top right hand side there, you've got your save fittings for personal and for corporation. And we'd like to add just a third button there that's the community fittings for a certain set of ships. And alliance fittings is something we'd also like to do someday too, yeah. But we are, yeah, nested corpse would be awesome someday. Um, but that's, that's a ways off. Um, so what I'm really happy to say is we're right now ready to start collecting fittings from the community. The back end's actually in place for this feature now. So we've implemented the code that's needed for it. And what we need now is the fittings from you guys. So this is, program is going to be operated by our ISD volunteers who are doing an amazing job of getting stuff together for it. Uh, and the way it's going to work is there's going to be a new forum section for submitting and discussing fits. We're going to be asking all of you guys to participate. We're asking the CSM to participate. And it'll be ISD that then vets the fits, um, looks through all the discussion, picks the ones, and they can implement it right into the game themselves so that it isn't something that ends up using up a lot of dev bandwidth. Uh, they can enter these things right into a special corporation in the game that then shows up. Um, we want to see fits in-game with a description that 
gives some people some information about how to use them, but that also includes the name of the person that created it. So that if you create a really awesome fit, post it on the forums, that you're going to get your name in the game, and newbies will see that this was created by whatever, Suetonia. It'll mostly be Suetonia, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the legend of Suetonia will just grow. Everyone will be flying Kestrels, all, all Kestrels all the time. So we're going to have a news item coming very soon with information about how you can uh, participate in this. Uh, and so keep an eye out for that. I'm hoping that that will be coming out in the next uh, week or two. And uh, we're really, really excited to try to get this into the game for people because we think this is a huge opportunity to show new players the kind of fittings available. One of the best ways to learn how to fit is to look at good fits that other people do. I know that's something both me and Rise do a lot for figuring out how to fit a ship as we just look at what people are losing and what smart people are losing. Uh, and that is really, really helpful. And uh, this is going to be really valuable, I think, for that. So that, that is our presentation for today. We've got a roundtable tomorrow at 10 in the Evolution Roundtable room. Um, tomorrow at 10 is uh, a bit tricky, I know, uh, with the party. We do promise to keep the lights low and to speak quietly. <laughs> and now we do have some time, so uh, it's well, yeah, 4.32 now. So. You can ask questions at the round table tomorrow, but you can also ask questions now. Um, we have uh, CSB Orca up at the front here with a microphone. So if you have any questions you want to ask that also get on the stream, then uh, go ahead and line up right up here at the front, and uh, we can do that. Thanks, everyone. So do you think, do you think we're ever going to do another uh, a ship design contest, like what happened with the Tech 3, um, not the, uh, the Tier 3 battle cruisers? So the question was if we're ever going to do a ship design contest again for the visual design of ships like was done with the tier three now attack battle cruisers. Um, I'm not sure. That's a question I think more for the art guys than for us. Um, do you have anything you want to? Yeah, I would say you should uh, talk to CCP Blue Screen. Um, I bet he could give you an idea. Uh, no, I don't know if they thought of doing that. I know that the Tornado is the coolest looking ship though, so I hope so. Thanks. Is there going to be any look into XL torpedoes and XL Citadel missiles as far as your application goes against caps? Because right now they're kind of underused because they don't apply that well. Yeah, so the, um, the those are going kind to of be looked at separately. The XL Citadel missiles we're going to be looking at as part of the Upwell Structures 2.0 pass early next year. Um, the XL missiles, I know CSP Larrikin's very interested in getting a pass done on those as well. Um, so yeah, I think we definitely like to do a, a full balance pass on them. Um, potentially, yes. Yeah, both cruises and torps. So I know that um, in wormholes they said that they were thinking of, well, they said yesterday that they were planning on, uh, in 2018, releasing moon mining with the new refineries. Um, any news on that? Is, there, is it just going to be basically normal ore? Is it going to be like rich veins of ore? Will it be NullSec equivalents or what? Yep, so we talked a little bit about this in the structures presentation earlier today as well. Okay. The, uh, the question was about moon mining and wormholes that we announced at the keynote. The moon mining and wormholes is going to be a special plus 15% variation of the normal ores. So it's going to be not giving moon materials for tech 2, it's going to be giving the standard tech 1 minerals, but there's going to be a variety of good ores. Some moons will be pretty low end, like there's some moons that are just going to have Veldspar in them and that you probably won't want to mine. Just like right now in NullSec there are some moons that don't have any value. But then some moons will have a lot of ABCs, a lot of really high end stuff. So is that going to be something that you run the algorithm on to determine what the moons actually produce? Or will yes. it just be a random thing every time you it, it, it'll be It'll be a randomized distribution, but it'll actually also use the same seed that we're voting on with the group here at Vegas. Uh, okay, then. All right, thank you. Thanks. For the people in the room, can I ask you to keep the conversation a little bit lower so we can hear the Q&A? Thank you. As a uh, module tier side goes forward, uh, officer and dead space modules, uh, there's a big disparity between the rarity uh, availability of those. But on the presentations, you said that they're going to be equal in terms of you know, power. Is there going to be some uh, bonus to having an officer module over the dead space modules? Uh, so for the, the question was about officer and dead space modules. They do have, there's a big disparity in the, um, uh, the availability of them, but the, the strength can often be the same. Yeah, in some cases we are interested in looking at adding uh, special uh, bonuses for the officer ones on top of the uh, dead space ones. 
Um, that's going to be a bit different based on different modules. Some are going to have uh, opportunities for that, some won't. Uh, the other kind of side of that coin is that um, we've actually been uh, recently started to slow down the tap of the introduction of um, new dead space modules, so especially the high-end dead space modules. The supply of them will be decreasing over time. Any discussion on the 1,000 limit, getting rid of that for the... Uh you know, hangers and stuff? Uh, so the question was about the 1,000 item stacks limit in hangers and whether we would ever get rid of that. Um, I would, that is really a question for uh, performance uh, focused engineers. Uh, it definitely does cause performance issues when you have a hanger with a whole lot of stacks in it. So we probably won't be able to increase it, at least not all that much. Like it's there for a very good reason. Uh, in general, we'd like to look at ways to uh, reduce the need to have that many items, especially with things like DPCs. I'd love to uh, have an opportunity, and this is something that uh, some of the members of our team have been really looking at, trying to uh, find a way to condense uh, stacks of um, DPCs together, for instance, so you won't have to have quite as many, because that's, that's the most common case we're seeing of people who run up against that limit, uh, is when they have a lot of DPCs, yeah. As far as the community fitting thing goes, uh, are you going to be breaking this up in any way? Is it going to be split? Are you just going to have one giant list, or can you break it up into like this is PVE stuff, this is small gang, this is solo, this is newbie friendly? Because newbie friendly ships are so different than the yeah. professionals. Uh, so the way it'll be displayed in game is that uh, you'll be able to search for it by ship, just like you can with your corp fittings or your personal fittings, and then the name of the fitting will describe whether it's a like newbie friendly PVE or PVP or small gang or fleet or things like that. Would it be possible just to get different icons for those to reduce it, it, it reduced yeah. confusion, so, and you have the room, it looks like you have the room. So. That's so a really good idea. Another, another thing about what's going to happen with, with the way that that all ends up looking is that we're really um, letting the community and the ISD figure out kind of what sort of density, like for instance, how many fits? Should there be a PVE and a PVP and a solo PVP? And a new, you know, how many is a, enough that people feel like it's helpful but not overwhelming? And we're going to start by letting ISD be really responsible for figuring all that out with you guys in the forums. And we'll, then we'll see where we end up. And if it's, you know, if it's we need to condense somewhat or we need to have new in, you know, icons or information to make it easier to use, great. But hopefully we're kind of trusting they can figure out a good amount of information and you know, a good amount of fits that won't confuse people. Thanks. Thanks. Hello. Um, do you guys have any plans to look at the faction capitals and either reducing the build cost or significantly increasing the power because like the faction dreads for 20 bill supers are better in every single way like yep. it's just not really worth it for most people mm -hmm. to get one just to immediately lose it for no gain so the question was about the faction capitals especially the faction uh, uh, dreads and carriers and faxes um, and the cost of them relative to their power yeah there definitely is um, there, because of the fact that those ships tend to especially uh, dreads and uh, faxes because you have to be locked in place with siege and triage, they're more, they're more danger. It's a much bigger risk to use them. Uh, so it is something we're interested in exploring, whether we need to make changes to them over time. But to a certain level, um, there will always be diminishing returns uh, for the power level of that huge uh, cost for the people that are getting the most expensive thing. They often are a bit of a status symbol uh, in, the, in the words of our... Uh, old, old uh, executive producer of EVE Online back in the day. Uh, these capitals are meant to be a big dick. So uh, there's, some, there's some value there of uh, just wanting to swing that around and show off rather than uh, necessarily having any uh, like combat power. How you doing? Have you all been considering to give the Naga like torpedo or missile capabilities to go along with the Kaldari theme of missiles? It's something we uh, had talked about a lot kind of some time ago, and then in the last, actually I remember the, the first pass that we did after I was here on Attack Battle Cruisers, we decided not to do that. 
something I'd be happy to revisit. I mean, we could, if we do go to look at just improving that class overall, we could, we could talk through it again. I have a feeling we'd end up with the same conclusion, but, but yeah, it's not off the yeah, table. Yeah, seems definitely worth thinking about. I mean, it's also important to remember that we don't want to under support rails as well, because rails are uh, a fully, like fully supported battle. Uh, weapon system for Kaldari. Um, so that also might be an opportunity for like a second set of attack battle cruisers in the future. Yeah, that or was something. always what sounded fun. Was either doing uh, like some some pirate faction attack battle cruisers that could pick up that role, or do a second line that that picks up the opposite weapon system. Um, so that might be something we could think about too. How would dr like a drone Galente one work? Like a, a railgun attack battle cruiser. That's I mean, obviously, or, it's not I mean, a railgun. Sorry, there's not enough Mordu ships. We need a Mordu attack. Yes, <laughs> just just make the Orthrus that and introduce a new cruiser. Yeah, hey, you said uh, you're going to go over battleships probably soon. Um, just wanted to know if you are going to go if you're looking into warp speed because they're god awful slow. The only ones I like flying are the Macarial and soon mm -hmm. the Marshall. <laughs> so this is an interesting question because it is it's a it's a um, it's an interesting kind of thought experiment looking back on what's happened over since we changed warp speeds because we've actually uh, the uh, battleships didn't slow down all that much compared to their their old speed, but everything else sped up, and so we'd end up with just kind of speed inflation if we keep buffing things up too much. Um, it's actually less that it's not really that they're much slower than before. It's that every, it's the now there's interceptors available that are fast and there there's uh, frigates that are faster and stuff like that. Um, Yeah, you can rise to the base speed of three, but then again, that that compresses everything together, especially at the like battle cruiser and cruiser level, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's something that we can definitely think about. Yeah, I mean, an unusual answer, I would say, no, it wasn't something we would have thought to to change heading into the battleship pass. That definitely wasn't like a you know a reason or a goal to begin with. Um, yeah, but it is is it is a discussion we can have again. I mean, since you mentioned it, I'll make sure at least we talk through it with the CSM. I think yep. most of us on the design team tend to, to sort of feel more on this side, that we're happy with the idea of spreading warp speed, mostly in front, speeding things up and having some things slow down uh, just to make sure that the whole game didn't shrink. But um, obviously, it's, it's a bit uncomfortable for people as well who like flying battleships, so it's not something we should ignore. Another way of tuning that is, is tweaks to hyperspatials as well, which we've done in the past where we've made hyperspatials a bit less painful to fit. And I mean, that could be a, another way of approaching it too. Just wondering if you guys could comment on the high angle dread weapons versus carrier fighters versus subcaps and how that balance is working out now that you've launched you know, these changes to capital ships. Um, yeah, so I mean, like they're obviously really powerful. Um, the uh, I'm we really need Larrikin, I think, on the stage to give a give a really in depth an answer for this. Um, but uh, I, I know the weapon systems as a whole for capital ships are something that are on are high on the list uh, to receive a, a balanced tune-up pass. Uh, so it's definitely something that uh, a special that Larry can be the expert on it, but that we'll be looking at. Yeah. I have a question on the assault damage controls. That'll be added to your base resists, right? Or will it just set your resists? No, it's not a set. It works like other resistance bonuses. Right on, and then after that, uh, the follow-up is, when it's on cooldown, are you getting the base DCU? Yeah, still getting the passive bonuses, yeah. Nice, thanks. Thank you, uh, I think I pitched this to you, Fozzie, the other night, but I've developed some gaps in my memory from that evening. Um, is there already, I, and I'll pitch it out for everyone in the community, but has there ever been any consideration for Sisters of Eve capitals that would be low mass capitals that could possibly traverse C4 wormholes? It fit the lore of the Nestor. It's the lowest mass battleship. If, I think I remember the conversation with you, yep. but I just wanted to throw it back out there. Yeah, I do remember that. So the question was about Sister Eve capitals, whether we'd want to introduce those someday, and whether if we did introduce them, they could be low mass, like the Nestor, and get into C4s. Um, and yeah, my, I'll repeat my response when you asked me about it before, which is that I think that's a really cool idea. We've thought about Sister Eve capitals before, um, but until you mentioned it, I hadn't really thought about the options available to making them low enough mass to maybe get into C4 and have that be part of a special trade for them. Um, so I think that's a really cool idea to explore. Um, yeah, I think like a, a Sister of Eve uh, Force Auxiliary would be really cool. With a bunch of like probing and hacking bonuses, of course. 
uh, in other games, sometimes a certain class of ship or character is used, is never balanced, like never buffed or nerfed, and used as kind of an anchor to, around which the other ships or characters are balanced. Is there any plans to have a certain set of ships that can be counted on to never be nerfed or buffed? Uh, I wouldn't, so the question was whether we think, whether we plan on having an anchor ship class that doesn't really get buffs or nerfs, um, but that is used as the baseline that everything else is compared to. Um, that kind of changes over time, right? Like for the, for the, for, like for instance, for the um, last pass on uh, uh, Tech 1 Frigates, or like the first big pass on Tech 1 Frigates, we used the Rifter as that baseline. Um, but now we're changing the Rifter too, right? So it's, we're, I don't think there's ever going to be a universal one, especially because most games that do that don't, don't have to uh, keep that consistent over 15 years, which is uh, a pretty significant time period. Yeah, I also don't feel like I can fully form what I'm thinking about, but like uh, evaluating, I feel like games where that makes sense often evaluating performance where it works a lot differently than it does in EVE where there's so many different environments. Like if we chose an anchor ship, um, it might make sense within one context of the game, but there's so many different contexts that it'd be, like if you're just looking at maybe like one type of um, fit, then you could hold one steady and use it as a reference point. But the game has just got so many different contexts that trying to have one ship as an anchor relative to all of them seems weird to me. So I feel like we have to be a little more dynamic and more like what, what Fozzie just said, like pick, when we're going to do a pass, pick a good reference point within that pass that we can use to, you know, kind of fix changes for other stuff relative to it, but then not hold it steady over, yeah, over years and years, regardless of everything else. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I just have to ask, rapid lights? The, I know the balance pass was paused. Are you yeah, you know, we, that? we were, before we had really dug into the work for the lifeblood pass, we had expected to um, make a change to rapid lights to bring them down a notch. But um, when we did dig into that work and looked at performance, they've actually gotten to a place that's not such an outlier that it feels like they need a nerf. Um, and so for now, at least, um, we're going to leave them there and probably take the path more of looking at some of the ships that, that use them so heavily, um, things like the Orthrus, and not, yeah, not, just didn't feel necessary to go after the weapon system right now. They, they, we could, but I think it would just kind of make them a little less fun to use, and they're not so out of line that that seems necessary. Thank you. Uh, Rise, I think I asked you this on your stream earlier, but just to get a general sense, how do we address mono fleets? You know, like all the same fleet. Like, I think that ships work better together when you're using the different skill sets, like target painter with e war with dampening, and as opposed to just having 50 of the same ship. I mean, it's a tough question. I think the start of the question is we're not super unhappy with how it is. Like, you know, building up a strategy that is unified and has a lot of synergy, supports the idea of a lot of using the same ship, and that doesn't seem bad necessarily. Um, but also we have talked a lot about how there's probably a lot of interesting space in doing more, um, more contextual um, bonuses or behaviors that, that benefit from diversity. We have some of those now, I mean, you know, the, when you see even simple things like Logi or um, Command Destroyers or whatever, we have, we have things that provide benefits that don't want to be a whole fleet, but perform better when they're in you know, a fleet with uh, some other range of things that they're supporting. And we could push that further, I think, and I would like to do that for sure. I think Command Destroyers was the best example of that, that you know, it's not combat. Right, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm <laughs> super happy with the fact that, they, you know, that they, there's a bunch of interesting roles they perform around a bunch of other types of ships, that th that role and kind of effect changes depending on what those ships are. Um, that I think it's really fantastic and for the stream they were just talking about command destroyers there because yeah, they yeah. didn't hear the, yeah uh -huh. yeah um, command destroyers is a great example of that uh, the fact that the um, defender missiles are limited to destroyers is another attempt to work in that kind of direction right of making sure that you have an incentive to bring a variety of ships but you you definitely do already have an incentive like you um, you want to bring a like uh, a uh, target painter uh, bonus ship or a web bonus ship, and so that enforces some variety. You get generally a main ship of the line for the damage ship, um, but I think that's okay for that to be consistent and then have kind of the roles have a variety. Um, you also see more variety 
with more groups that are a bit more tight knit, small and elite, because of the fact that as a fleet commander, it's really hard to get every like, combination of all the ships you need. Uh, so you see it especially in wormholes, uh, a lot more variety, uh, where they'll be bringing the like um, some uh, ECM ships as, uh, alongside their damage ships, alongside their target painting and webbing ships and scrambling ships, and um, and their logic, of course. Uh, hi. Whoa. Has any uh, thought been put into adding additional area of effect weapons uh, simply because the easiest strategy right now is to orbit anchor at X and have the anchor fly you wherever you want to go? And adding additional strategy to the landscape would uh, help balance short range and long range weapons as you, you showed that short range weapons, the larger, ship, the larger your fleets get, the larger the ships get, generally the short range weapons take over and, and area of effect weapons might give an incentive to spread out and maybe make that a little bit more even. Yeah, um, the question was about adding more area of effect weapons. I mean, things like the supercarrier burst projectors in Titan uh, Doomsdays are definitely attempts to move in that direction. Uh, and uh, any kind of, anything that gives people incentives to get better at flying uh, is always something that's really exciting. Command destroyers are actually another really great example of that. Basically, we just, command destroyers are kind of awesome in every way, and they're the answer to every question. Um, I also would add we, we definitely do want to poke more at AE weapons. There's a couple different prototypes and things we've um, played around with but haven't made it all the way into production. One of them was a while back we had a, um, a kind of prototype for a Tech 2 Battlecruiser that shot um, small bombs, like a clip of 10 or 20 small bombs um, that behave just like bombs but have you know a smaller AE. Um, and that was pretty interesting but didn't quite, we were worried about performance and that's something we could revisit. We also, with the work on the super carrier, I mean the um, super capital weapons, um, CSB Larrikin was doing a lot of prototyping, playing around with smaller versions of it. He really likes the idea of, um, you know, like spinal mount directional weapons that, that do beam damage or something like that. And so we've definitely played around with this kind of thing and uh, wouldn't be surprised at all if we continue to and hopefully some of it makes it in. So we'll see. So I know some of the players have been asking for a few years now um, about the whole imbalance of assault frigates and other frigate class ships ever since the whole release of Tech 3 destroyers. Is there any plans at any point to maybe rework assault frigates to actually be able to outrun an Orthros? So let me guess, you missed the beginning of this presentation. Yes, I did. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can you go back in the slide? Do you still have a clicker? Uh, it's a little... Oh, oh that's not going to be up. Fine. I can yeah, get back we're going to gonna, we're gonna rework assault frigates and uh, mm -hmm. uh, heavy assault cruisers in a month or two. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. You, yep. can, you can find more. We, we talked about some of the details for it on here, but you can go back mm -hmm. and... Uh, <laughs> it's pretty far back, but I thought it'd be nice to show um, But yeah, there'll be, there, there'll be some there you details go. you can see. Um, uh, yeah, and one of the things we're doing is putting in a new module specific for them mm -hmm. that should give them some distinct place. We're probably going to buff the speed on AF some, so just look out for information. We'll probably have a dev, mm -hmm. dev blog in a week or two All with right, more thank details. You. Yep. All right, thanks, everyone.